Ryan with Miss Dog Geek here, and today we're going to do something a little bit different for the camera setup because I need to show you how to wind one of these. If, I can, if you can see that, if I can get it to focus here, maybe, maybe not, it's too close. <laughs> this is a tri filer wound transformer on an FT37 43 toroidal inductor. What Trifiler simply means is there's three wires twisted together and then wound like a normal uh, toroid. And then the ends are separated, tinned, and then we figure out which one's which. Now this one is was wound by a nice Indian lady for Farhan. This came out of my BIDX40. Uh, so this one is several years old. Um, no reason I couldn't use this, except that that's not what we're here to do. So today we're going to wind one from scratch, just as the uh, uh, QDX instructions instruct us to do. So uh, to get started, we need to look at the manual and I've got it up here behind me. Basically we need three eight inch or 27, 20 centimeter lengths of wire, which I have. And then we need to put about 60 or so twists into that wire and then wind the toroid uh, traditionally, and then of course separate the wires and find out which one, you know, get the, uh, well, I'll show you. We'll, we'll get each side so that uh, this each set of wires matches each other uh, continuity wise. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And that is first by getting the lengths of the wire and twisting them. And to do that, uh, I'm gonna reposition my camera here and we're going to use power tools. All right, so first I need the wire, which I've got here. This is, uh, that's not the right one. One of these is the right one here. Between these I have enough, but we need three eight inch links. And I've got a, a measure here on my, uh, front of my, my bench. So this is eight inches. And I'm actually gonna do a little over that because I think I have enough to do well, quite a bit more than that. Let's see, I'm gonna do nine inches and then simply fold it over so you have three wires all together. Oops. And I'll make sure that all three of them equal eight inches or more. Yep, these are closer to 10 inches. And then I'm gonna trim off this little bit of excess that I have here. Don't need it. Now in the instructions, it says that you can tie one end of this to like a school screwdriver. In fact, I've got one just like the one he uses in the photo. I think we all have these. You can buy them for a dollar, pretty much, you have know, a set of them for a dollar, pretty much anywhere. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use my pliers here. But before I do that, I'm going to fold over this end so that it is slightly larger, like so. So you can see that, slightly larger. And I'm gonna chuck it in my drill. Now I've got my drill set to slow speed. And I'm just gonna oops, tighten this up in here. Not super tight, just enough. go and the other end I'm also going to fold over just slightly ever so slightly so that I have a flat surface and then I'm going to hold this, this end like so so you can see I've got one end in my plier the other end in here and then
What a... It was that easy, guys. Like, literally, that was it. We're done. Try filer. Now, uh, what we're gonna do here is cut off the ends. We'll cut close to the end here. I'm gonna measure out eight inches on my little thing here. And there's one little spot that didn't quite wind perfectly and I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, you might have a spot like this. If you can see it right uh, there, it did not wind perfect. Uh, I'm not gonna fret about that because we're not going for absolute perfection here. I mean, if maybe if I had another length of it, I would try harder, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. So what I'm gonna do is just cut the other end off here. Now it's time to wind our toroid. So let me get my tools out of the way, reposition the camera, and we are going to wind this bad boy. All right, so now we've got our wire, our tri-filer wire, and our FT37-43. And so the directions uh, tell us to twist it or to turn it the same way we've turned the rest of them. So, all right, just want to do the same as we did before. So we'll start by getting turn number one in backwards, like so, and pull as we twist that one. There's one turn, now there's two turns. And that's because there are two passes of the wire going through the center of the toroidal core, toroidal inductor. And here's three. Give it a nice pull, make it nice and tight. This wine is real easy, guys. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Didn't even have to fast forward through this one. All right, so simple as that, guys. It really is. So, I mean, it looks like my uh, my bad wines didn't even get wound, so or my bad turns here didn't even make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this about right here. And then I'm gonna spread these out so that they're roughly even. All right, now we need to untwist these, these ends. And this is the part where you should be heating up your soldering iron right about now and turning it up nice and high, which is what I have done. You can hear my heater clicking there. It is uh, not a nice day as far as weather goes, definitely <laughs> radio building weather. Okay, I might have unwound it a little bit further than I wanted to, but whatever. Okay, so now we've got two sets of three each lines here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our helping hands and just stick this in there. And we're gonna tin all of these now. And what I'm doing is I'm grabbing some tape here because I'm gonna use this tape to help identify these uh, for myself later. Grab my soldering iron and bring it nearby. And get my tin, my soldering iron tinned here. 
it's going to be important to have a good tin on your iron. And if you're like me and you just use the same old tip that you've been using for years, uh, it might take some effort. <laughs> I don't even know. I think this is a couple years old. And I might be in the market for a new soldering iron. Um, the only, these cheapy ones work fine. I, I actually don't have anything really against them except for, um, grab it here. You can see there's some wobble there that gets kind of annoying. Um, I was talking with another, uh, ham that I know who has one of these and for him, the wobble was up here. And so he just like cut a little piece of wire and stuck it up there and that solved it. But for mine, the, the wobble is down here. So kind of annoying, but I mean, this thing was a few dollars. So, uh, it, it, it heats up just the same. All right. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and tin the first one. And this is the process for all six of them. So probably going to fast forward right about now, not make you watch all of this. Okay, so these all appear to be tinned. I think I might like to do this one a little bit better. All right, now it's time to test continuity on these guys and get them lined up together. So it's pretty easy. You're gonna take one and then just, you know, one out of three, hopefully. <laughs> Unless I didn't tin them well. That's a possibility. Okay, we'll try another one. Boy, I'm not I'm striking out here. Okay, so I know these two match, so I'm gonna go ahead and line these up. Because I was able to get continuity from here to here. Now these two are unknowns. Let me try this again here. I don't think I... Oh, these two match, okay, good. I just wasn't getting a good contact there, okay. So I've already got two out of three. That leaves means process of elimination is that these two are together. Let's try this one more time. I got a bad tin right here. So I'm gonna redo that one. Um, I actually don't need to at this point because I already, I mean, process of elimination, right? But I like hard evidence more than uh, empirical, or not empirical, but uh, circumstantial evidence. Okay. Let's try that one again. This is indeed fiddly, I will admit. There we go. Okay, so we have all three lined up. So just like it's shown in the directions, uh, we have, grab something pointy here. We have A goes to A, B goes to B, C goes to C. So it doesn't matter which way you turn it, it's just that these three are, are matched. So let's just double check that I didn't lose any of the orientations here. So I know these are together because I just did it. Even the, There we go. These. There we go. 
and these, there we go. So now, because I'm not going to be inserting this into the board right now because I don't have it yet, I'm going to do some masking tape here, those two together, and put those together here, and these two together, and the other ones can hang out in the wind because, again, process of elimination. And there you have it, guys. All right, guys, so that's it. There's not much more to this. We're done. Um, we just will have to put this in the QDX when it comes. And to do that, uh, we'll just un unwrap these and insert them and then just install them. So I've already wound the rest of of these this is l14 i have uh the rest of these here for the um, other transformers and filter uh low pass filter uh, uh inductors so i'm just going to take this and put that in my bag so when the qdx arrives we have all the inductors ready to go except for the binocular inductor which i don't have one otherwise i would wind it too Anyway, thanks for following along. I sure do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and consider subscribing and following along. When we get the QDX, hopefully this coming week, we'll see. I don't know. And uh, we'll be definitely be doing the build just like this. So thanks for following along. We'll see you next time.